Well, hello everyone. Thanks for coming back. And guess what that is? It's in case of a power outage. It's basically a power supply. It's got some plugs. This one has a an actual RV plug, 30 amp. And some USB, some 12 volt. What I like about it is it's right beside my furnace. So when the power goes out, when it's minus 50 below, or even when it's not, instead of me going outside trying to get my uh, gas generator all hooked up and that, I'm just going to simply unplug my furnace and plug it into the power bar. And of course that power bar goes to the power station. Now you say, uh, what charges it? Well, you can charge it off of 110, or you can charge it off of solar. That's what these connections are for. So, solar. Solar what? Solar panels. And uh, I've already charged this a few times using solar panels and it was free. It cost me nothing. Well, the cost of the panels. But you get my drift. Like, once this thing is uh, plugged in and set up, it will charge itself during the day. And at night time, um, I can discharge stuff if I want to run a few things to try to help save the uh, our outrageous power bills. So what I've done is... Uh, I ran some 10 gauge PV cable and it's meant for solar arrays. So I uh, ran the cable to the side of my joist on this drill little hole and now it'll go outside. So let's go outside and let's see where this comes out. And there you go. This is the other side of the house now. Um, this one is my security system. It goes to my garage and there's the new conduit there for the solar panels and it basically goes underground because I do have to go through here every so often there's a gate and then pipe I just put it above ground it's right near the property line the fence line no one comes back here See, you can now see my secondary line that goes to my garage. But this one does a 90. There you go, another 90. And to a junction box. And guess what's on the other side of this junction box? Well, that's the rest of this cable going into this shed. So basically, I'm going to be mounting my panels on the shed not the house two reasons insurance three reasons insurance holes in your roof and easy maintenance brushing off snow etc washing it on the shed here i don't have to worry about insurance i don't have to worry about holes in my main house and i can stand on my trailer here and easily clean the snow off of my panels. Also, I can adjust them too. Inside my shed, basically, that's where the cable comes in to this breaker. So, in will be coming my solar panels, and then out, that's what goes to the house. So, I have approximately 100 feet of a 10 gauge PV cable going to the house. But yeah, I wanted this inside and on my shed. So yeah, there you go. There's a solar panel. 200 watt. Oh, there's another one. Oh, there's another one. And another one. 
So I'm going to have a total of 800 watts of solar panel. So this will be permanently mounted. How? How you say? Well, that's the next journey. This is going to be making a mount. I want to mount it to the side of my shed. I want to be able to tilt it as well as rotate it. Because come winter time, you're going to need to readjust the tilt and the and rotate it. So I went through my shed, and this is what I've come up with. Now, obviously, you're going to be different scenario, what you have and all that. But basically, it's some quarter-inch angle iron, some heavy wall inch-and-a-half square tubing, um, some eighth-inch 2x3, uh, and some pipe, and miscellaneous little bolts and parts and all that. And uh, I've already made one. And let's, let's go take a look at the prototype. And there's my prototype. So basically, I got my rotate. And of course, you know, this, this gets mounted to the wall. I got two adjusting screws here, or bolts, and even a third one. So, it'll keep its angle and tight. And then I can also do this. So I really wanted this to tilt back more, so I'm going to have to redesign this top part because it would be easier to um, put the panels down if it's more flat. Right now it's at about a 48 degree angle. In my area I need about 45. So there's the prototype. So I think well, that one little modification there, and that's it. And of course, you know, um, this is what the solar panels will mount on. Got the holes already drilled in that. And so, other than that part there, I'll bring this shaft down a little bit more, and then we can uh, tilt it further back. So, let's get at it. Well, okay, so I got this uh, 2 by 3 square tubing. Um, I already capped it off. But now I'm going to weld the actual mounting brackets that will go against the building. So that will be the end result. So the way the tin is, um, it is, you know, inwards a little bit. So I have to kind of create a, you know, quarter inch, two inch on top of that in the pipe and that way it will uh, clear that edge. I did not put a rain gutter on here and I'm kind of glad I didn't. So yeah, by me creating all of this depth, that pipe I should clear the edge of my building. Now, the next part is I've got to get um, these welded on, two of them. And then weld it onto this. So that'll be the next step. I've got to obviously clean this stuff up. Uh, I've got both welders going here. That's why a little bit noisy, but I've got my MIG and then I got my ARC, both running off of 110. Not at the same time, but one or the other. I'm getting very low on MIG gas, so I just want to be able to use the MIG to tack everything together. And then when I want some good penetration, I'll throw on the uh, buzz box there. Okay, so let's get this all cleaned up and ready for um, the next stage. Okay, as promised, I got the pipe further down in that uh, collet. So hopefully I'll get more of an angle. Okay, so now I'm uh, measuring out for the holes to actually mount the panels. And on the panel, it's 7 eighths and then 26 and 3 eighths. So I measured from one side, 7 eighths, 26 and 3 eighths, and then from the other side, 7 eighths and 26 and 3 eighths. Your panels could be different, but, and then there will be a little bit of a gap, but that's kind of how you would measure. Don't try to measure all from one side. Measure this side, measure that side. And of course, your friend is a center punch. 
Make sure you center punch those before you uh, drill them. That way you know you're dead on. Okay, so I'm ready to weld up the second one. And the nice thing about it is I've got the first one to just lay on top. I've already got the measurements all done and squared on the first one. So the second one just that much faster, that, that much easier. So I'm ready to uh, do my last few welds. Yeah, we're going to be done here pretty soon. And there you go. Now you have two. And uh, there you go. So there's my version of a pole mounted frame for solar panels. I'm going to be putting two on each one. Uh, they're 25 pounds each, so 50 pounds. And I just didn't want to put everything all on one. So, and this way maybe I can have one tilted a little bit more easterly and one tilted a little bit more westerly. So it will be the best of both worlds. I won't have to go outside and move things around too much. Especially come winter time. But anyways, uh, so the next thing i got to do is obviously um, clean these up. And uh, one of you guys said you're going to help me paint. Awesome. Okay, that's, that's next. I got these all painted. And just because placement is very tight back there, I'm, going, I'm just going to drill a hole. Oh, heavy. Okay, I got my one hole here, one hole up there. So we're going to put this right there and I'll screw it on either side. And that way we have something beefy to mount the pole to. There we go. One mounted and the other one mounted. Okay, let's go outside and physically put the pole on the building. I don't think that's going to. Okay, let's get the the actual support on. Okay, so goes like this. There's one kind of flaw there. I didn't take into consideration that uh, won't be able to tilt it too much without damaging a panel. But get these locked in. Okay, so I went up from my uh, box. A little pipe and and two nineties. So rain rain doesn't go up. So then, of course, uh, I'm using three quarter inch uh, PVC, and of course that meant I had to cut the lines because you cannot shove those MC four connectors through that. If you maybe have one inch, sure, but that's twice the cost. So. Um, and you just cannot get these apart. Um, basically, the barrel, it's got some teeth on it. So once you push push it in, it isn't coming out. So you're going to have to get a couple of new MC4 connectors. Crimper's always good to have. Okay, so let's let's get the uh, let's let's get those ends on. Okay, there we are. 800 watts. And uh, I've already charged up my 
Blue Eddy 200 Max power station. And now I'm charging up some DeWalt batteries using the sun. So I hope I gave you guys some ideas on pull mounting uh, some panels on the side of your shed. And I've uh, tucked the wires underneath with zip ties. Now yeah, we'll get that cover back on. And in here I got my breaker. And I even got a 15 amp fuse. You just never know. Double, double protection. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm producing 700 and I'm receiving 712 watts. I'm using 258 watts. And yeah, I'm just charging up my DeWalt batteries. Also running my security system. But yeah, I think that's pretty neat using the sun now. <laughs>